know how to prune crepe myrtles? I see crepe myrtles pruned inappropriately all the time, and I don't think any pruning is so misunderstood as crepe myrtle pruning. Environmental horticulture agent Jennifer Pelham is here with me today with the UF recommendations on crepe myrtle pruning. Welcome, Jennifer. Hi, thank you for having me. So tell me, I do see crepe myrtles mispruned all the time, and we call it crepe murder, right? Right, we call it crepe murder because it really hurts the tree the way they are pruned, and we call that topping. Uh, when you see the crepe myrtles that are pruned severely, that's, that's called topping. It's actually pretty bad for the trees. It is bad for the trees, and we see it all the time because commercial companies and homeowners, why do they do it? I like to call it the copycat crime in landscaping <laughs> because they start seeing it with the landscapers pruning the crepe myrtles that way, then the homeowners start pruning their crepe myrtles that way, and it just seems to keep going and going when it's really not the proper way to prune crepe myrtles. Let's demo this a little bit. We have this crepe okay. myrtle here, and this is this the time of year to prune it when it doesn't have any leaves? Exactly. When the, the crepe myrtles are, are dormant, you want to start pruning them before they put out the new flush of, of green leaves in the spring. So now's the perfect time to prune the crepe myrtles. Right, really, for, for February, March might even be a little bit March late. March might be a little yeah, late, so February's a good time to prune them. So you had mentioned t taking off seed heads and let's demo that um, that pruning okay taking them off but why would we do that well you can actually prune the seed heads now uh, when they are dormant or even when they have the leaves and the and the flowers are are spent you can prune off that to try to initiate more blooming uh, during the summer months mm -hmm. um, plus some people don't like the look of the the seed heads they can kind of have you know not not very attractive look to them so it, pruning them off will make it a better, a more attractive tree. So you're on, when you're pruning off the seed heads, you're only pruning off thin diameter wood. Right, we call this tip pruning or pencil pruning. You mm -hmm. don't want to prune anything thicker than about the diameter of a pencil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's demo let's that. Let's demo that. So here we off. have a seed head, um, and you would just cut down to about a pencil width. This one's a little less than that, but that's, that's uh, about the size. Here's another one. We can prune this one probably a little further down, mm -hmm. and that's just tip pruning. And by doing so, we're gonna initiate more growth and hopefully initiate more more flowering. So actually you can prolong your blooming period by taking off seed heads. Correct, yes. And I don't do it in my landscape because it's a lot of work, but I have tall tall crepe myrtles. So, so when people are cutting into wood that is bigger than a pencil size, or your finger, your pinky finger, right. they're really not doing what's best for the plant. No, like I said, that is called topping, and when you have these large open wounds on the tree, it la leaves uh, a lot of opportunity for insects and diseases to set in into the tree, and by pruning it so hard, you're cutting off a lot of the, the foliage off the tree, or the areas where they potentially can form foliage, which reduces their ability to make food and photosynthesize, and, and it will definitely decrease the, the vigor of the tree and the health of the tree. And actually, the crepe myrtle, when dormant, has a lot of the varieties have beautiful bark um, characteristics. They do. A lot of them have exfoliating bark where the bark peels along the side and you can see some green and white coloring underneath and the sometimes bark. Sometimes it's really even pretty. like cinnamon colored. It, you know, is, it's beautiful, it is. Beautiful, beautiful. Nice. So when they're cutting into big diameter wood and they're using chainsaws and things right. like that, they're really not pruning them properly. And can, can, can we get more sucker growth when we prune that hard? Definitely. When, when you do prune that hard, prune that hard, uh, they, the, that, the sucker growth off the bottom by the roots is a, a response to the tree. The tree is suffering from cutting so back so hard that it's mm -hmm. pushing up growth from the roots. And so mm -hmm. now you're gonna have to go and prune those suckers off the bottom. Uh, and it's just not, again, it's not healthy for the tree to prune yeah. that hard. And there are some varieties of crepe myrtle we don't even have to prune, right? There are some varieties. We have crepe myrtles that fit any landscape. And by not pruning the crepe myrtles is actually better for the tree, for the health of the tree. So you can get crepe myrtles that fit, that, that are any size. You can get crepe myrtles that are about four feet tall all the way up to ones being over 20 feet tall. So find the crepe myrtle that fits your landscape. Jennifer Pelham, thank you for giving this information about pruning crepe myrtles. Thank you. Less may be better when pruning crepe myrtles. If you have questions, you can contact the Extension Office.